Hey, how you doing? I'm Callum and this is Slapped Ham. So today we have something a little bit special. It's some bonus content for the week. It's a compilation of some super scary video clips that are freaking the internet out. So hit that subscribe button and get ready for more creepy content. Just like this. <laughs> The following piece of footage was taken from a CCTV camera at the Mickabrook pub located in Cheadle, Stockport in the UK. It was uploaded by Cater's News. For years there's been rumours that this pub is haunted by a malicious spirit. Staff and patrons often report objects moving on their own and have even felt things touch them despite no one being around. Could this CCTV footage prove that this old pub is actually haunted? Take a look. There. Glass that one. <laughs> that is horrible. <laughs> that is a face of a girl that is not what we're here no more. As you can see, one of the glasses shoots across the bar and shatters on the ground. But as creepy as this one incident is, it's not the only thing employees of the Mickabrook pub have experienced during their stay. Many of the workers have said they've felt their hair being pulled in an aggressive manner by an unseen presence, one that they've since given the name Harry. And they've also said this isn't the first time a glass has been flung across the bar and shattered. In addition, punters have reported seeing a mysterious shadow-like figure donning a black hat who usually stands in the hallway before disappearing without a trace. So what in the world could possibly be going on here? Can this all be chalked up to strange circumstances and coincidence? Or is this old pub genuinely haunted by a deviant spirit? Let me know your take on this in the comments section down below. <laughs> that is horrible. <laughs> that is a face of a girl that is not what work here no more. The following video captures something that no parent would ever want to see on their baby monitor video feed. This video, which was shared online by Cater's News, shows a baby in a crib during the middle of the night. At first, nothing of unease can be seen, but that doesn't last for too long. Take a look at the bone chilling footage and see if you can notice what makes this video so unsettling. It's like she's digging a hole to get out. Mm -hmm. My baby sister's awake. No. A face can be seen peering in at the baby. I don't know, baby, where's that breast? Seconds later, the infant begins thrashing about in the cot. Looks <laughs> like she's digging a hole to get out. Mm -hmm. My baby sister's awake. No. Melissa Smith, the mother of the baby in the video, insists that she's always been a huge skeptic when it comes to anything related to the paranormal. But that all changed in September of 2016, when, after a miscarriage, she began to experience some truly terrifying things going on and around her house in Toronto, Canada. The same night Melissa lost her child, she said that a children's toy began turning itself on and off and started to play music. In addition to this, she also claimed that the closet doors would begin to slam shut, and she could hear mysterious banging on her bedroom door despite no one else being home. Strangely, if we watch the footage again, there appears to be a shadow on the left of frame that comes in and out of the footage. Admittedly, this might just be from the person who's filming the baby monitor footage on their phone. But this still doesn't explain that mysterious face peering in on the crib. So what do you think this mysterious ghostly face is? Is it the ghost of a child? Some freaky coincidence? Or is this just a trick of the lighting and Melissa has nothing to worry about? Whichever way you look at it, it's certainly a frightening piece of footage. My baby sister's away. 
Nottingham's Prism nightclub is rumoured to be haunted. It has a turbulent 95 year long history and was once the site of a correctional facility which housed some of the UK's most notorious criminals. According to some eerie CCTV footage captured on site, it seems perhaps the spirits of the former inmates never left. The manager, Thomas Dodd, was checking the security camera footage one night when he saw something that shocked him. Take a look at the footage and see for yourself. As you can see, one of the bar's fridge doors appears to miraculously open all by itself before a bottle goes flying out of it. As you can probably understand, Thomas was shocked upon reviewing the footage and still to this day has no idea what could have caused the bottle to fly out of the fridge. It hasn't been made clear whether or not Thomas is skeptical of the paranormal, but it's hard to explain this any other way. Mum of five, Tracy Lenahan, was sharing some sweet and happy memories of her late father, Terence, with her eldest daughter, Natalie, in October of 2019. What started off as a relaxing day for Natalie and Tracy quickly turned into something truly creepy. While Tracy was telling her daughter all about her late father, the two women noticed something bizarre in the window of their Liverpool home, which is when they decided to pull out their camera. Have a look at the clip. The mum had just marked what would have been her father's 83rd birthday after he sadly passed away due to complications with pneumonia following a stroke he suffered in 2009. When they saw the strange figure in the window and pulled back the curtain, they were surprised to see that there was nobody there. The mother-daughter pair were left even more freaked out when they reviewed the footage and noticed that there's a hand that appears to be holding Natalie's in the window reflection. Here's the reflection again in slow motion. It genuinely does look like another hand is holding Natalie's hand. So is this really the ghost of Tracy's late father Terence? Watch the eerie footage again and decide for yourself. Andrew Ward is a paranormal investigator that lives in a secluded cottage in Melbourne, Cambridgeshire, UK, which just so happens to be 400 years old. He says his cottage is haunted by an entity and wants to see if he can capture it on camera for his viewers to see. Well, we're upstairs in the, the bedroom now actually and as I said, um, I've got a camera on the window and it's going to be on all night and in fact it's going to be on for the next few nights uh, just in case um, we don't see the, the ghost the first night. So let me just show the little rig up we've got at the moment. So here's the camera. He sets up a camera in his bedroom to record during the entire night. This is what he captured.
Andrew believes this is definitive proof that the cottage is haunted after more than 30 years of rumours and speculation from previous occupants, with one stating that someone had actually died there just years prior. Some viewers suggested perhaps it was the wind that opened the window. However, the opening of the latch looks far too deliberate for a simple breeze. Furthermore, this window is on the second floor and opens outwards, ruling out the possible use of string or wire. So I'd love to hear your take on this eerie piece of footage in the comments section down below. TikTok user The Weird Shelf uploaded a piece of trail cam footage that was filmed late at night somewhere in Wisconsin. In the video, we can see an animal roaming around the area when it suddenly becomes spooked by something. Take a look. A glowing pair of massive wide eyes appears off in the distance between a couple of trees in the forest. Some viewers suggested it could be none other than the folkloric creature Bigfoot or even the rake, but others have suggested it could just be a large coyote or even a wolf lurking in the bushes. Sadly, the video is shrouded in secrecy with little to no information about the piece of footage being known. However, even without a lot of context, it still remains an eerie video that will more than likely cause you to think twice about wandering around the woods late at night. Imagine digging a well so deep that it breaks into hell. Well, some think it has happened before. In 1989, Trinity Broadcasting Network, a radio show, reported on the well to hell for the first time. The well comes from an urban legend in Russia that asserts the drilling of a well so deep that it actually went all the way to hell. The legend goes that Mr. Azakov, leading a team of engineers, drilled a hole somewhere in Siberia, going as deep as 14.4 kilometers or around 8.9 miles down. While drilling, they broke into a cavity which piqued their interest. The team lowered a microphone which was heat tolerant and other sensory equipment down into the hole. The equipment showed the temperature to be 1000 degrees Celsius, which is around 1832 Fahrenheit. However, the microphone seemed to pick up something a little more unsettling than high temperature. It sounded like screaming voices coming from the middle of Earth. Here's a sample. And, uh, I warn you, what you are about to hear is very disturbing indeed. <laughs> said that the miners all went insane and started fighting each other. When a secondary team arrived to help with the drilling, they discovered the camp in disarray and the first squad of miners were missing. A Finnish newspaper named Amenasastia reported the story for the first time. After that, American tabloids picked up the news and it spread like wildfire. Trinity Broadcasting Network is a Christian network that quickly took up the story and said it was proof of the existence of hell. While he was visiting the US, a Norwegian teacher, Arge Rendellen, said that the story was merely a product of people's gullibility. He later wrote to Trinity Broadcasting, giving his point of view. Interestingly, he went back to Norway and read another account of the story, which was supposedly factual. The story said that the well was cursed and quite real. Also, it said a bat-like creature, which could be associated with a demon, flew out of the well and blazed across the sky. Trinity Broadcasting didn't do anything to verify whether it was a hoax or not and ran the story. 
Later, many versions of the same story were heard around the US. For instance, in 1992, Weekly World News published the same storyline but with a different location. According to this story, the incident took place in Alaska, where Satan climbed out of the well and killed 13 miners. Today, you can find the horrific retelling of the story on many YouTube videos that also have the infamous tormented sounds. However, it was later revealed that the sound effects were taken from different sources, with Barren Blood, a 1972 horror movie, being the most prominent source. Just when these sounds were injected into the urban legend remains a mystery. In 1983, the CIA wrote a very bizarre report called The Gateway Report that claimed an altered state of consciousness can be the gateway to astral projection. In 2003, the report was declassified and has since fueled conspiracy theories and readers' imaginations worldwide. Named The Analysis and Assessment of the Gateway Process, the document was 29 pages long. It dove into the CIA's investigation of whether hypnosis and mind control could be helpful in the Cold War. The report is quite dense and wordy, going from complex topics like quantum mechanics and neuroscience to a pseudoscience that has, since its release, been debunked. Some people have called it a mind labyrinth as it goes on to explain scientific underpinnings of some spiritual concepts and space-time transcendence for 24 long pages. It discusses transcendental meditation, hypnosis, biofeedback, universal holograms, and spiritual beliefs. According to the report, the universe comprises of interacting energy fields and that the mental states are merely energy variations. The human consciousness follows the same principle, being a vibrational energy pattern. Once an individual achieves a state known as hemi-sync, they can enter an altered state of consciousness. In this state, the vibrations of their consciousness are not limited by physical reality. Thus, they can tune into the energy field purely and freely. Some took this report quite literally and thought it to be the basis of the laws of attraction, which states that bad thoughts attract bad outcomes while good thoughts attract good outcomes. Others believe the CIA was investigating the idea of mind warriors that could literally travel through space and time using their mind alone the applications of which are limitless. As if it wasn't already mysterious enough, the report misses page 25. Ever since its declassification, there have been requests to the CIA to release page 25. However, the CIA denies the existence of this page in the first place. Due to this, the page became the holy grail for conspiracy theorists, curious minds, astral projectors, and pretty much anyone who knew about the report. As interesting and mind-boggling as this report was, the CIA didn't invent the Gateway experience. In fact, the report was based on the teachings of Robert Munro, who's the founder of the Munro Institute. The Institute emailed news outlet Vice after reading the publication's first article on the Gateway report, saying that they actually had page 25 in their archives. As it turns out, page 25 of the report discusses the absolute, which is the universe's governing energy. As per the report, this universal hologram is an endlessly flowing spiral that intervenes with reality as we know it. Whether page 25 was left out on purpose or accidentally, no one really knows. We do know that the Munro Institute still exists and apparently has exercises to facilitate astral projection. Human beings have been obsessed with UFOs for as long as they've speculated about their existence. However, your story has to be highly credible for it to become the basis of the X-Files. Kelly Kale lived in Victoria, Australia with her husband in 1993. One day, she was in her car with her husband driving through the Dandenong Ranges when they saw a blimp-like object flying through the sky. It had a row of five or six orange lights and made a distinct circular shape. The couple spotted the object a number of times during the night before seeing the object fly off rapidly. What happened next is a complete mystery. Kale felt like her memory went blank, almost like a cut in a movie. 
when she realised they were several hundred metres down the road with no memory of having travelled the distance. When the couple got home, they noticed that they had lost a full hour. On top of that, Kale had a triangular mark close to her belly button that was quite painful. Undergoing hypnotherapy, she had flashbacks over the coming months and later went on national television to narrate her story. Kale claims that several alien beings appeared in a field. They had no discernible features aside from bulbous red eyes. They seemed to be able to communicate telepathically. Another car just up the road also pulled over to witness the event. They later corroborated the story, giving further details. They claimed they were taken aboard a craft and examined by alien beings. They too claimed they had a triangular wound on their lower abdomen following the incident. A Melbourne-based paranormal research group, Phenomena Research Australia, was called in to document the case. A 300-page report was written up detailing the bizarre incident, including interviews from multiple witnesses. Sadly, intergroup politics muddied the case and the report was never released to the public. Many UFO enthusiasts believe that the unreleased report is a golden opportunity gone to waste. In the 2016 X-Files reboot, Fox Mulder himself referenced this historic case. Interestingly, I was just looking at the map of where this allegedly took place and it's only 20 minutes from where I currently live. Maybe one day we'll do a live stream from the exact location where this now infamous alien encounter took place. Been having any weird dreams lately? Maybe it's this man paying you a visit in your dreams. This man is apparently a man who multiple people have repeatedly seen in their dreams since 2006. Andrea Natella, an Italian marketer, made a website in 2008 called Ever Dream This Man that took the internet by storm as many people claim to have seen the man in their dreams. However, despite so many people dreaming about him, no one could find the actual person. This man first surfaced when a woman told her psychiatrist that she kept seeing a man in her dreams. The psychiatrist sketched the man. Later, one of his male patients saw the drawing and claimed he too had seen the man while dreaming. Interestingly, none of them had actually ever seen the man in real life. Upon this interesting revelation, the psychiatrist sent the drawing to his colleagues who had patients with repeated dreams. Patients of four of the psychiatrist's colleagues recognised the man as the person they kept seeing in their dreams. When the story went viral in 2009, over 2,000 people from all over the world claimed to have seen the man in their dreams. People from New Delhi, Paris, Dubai, Manila, Stockholm, Amman, Rome, Berlin and many other cities identified this man from their dreams. The dreams were spread over an interestingly expansive spectrum. While some people experienced romantic and even sexual closeness to the man, others were in deadly situations with him. In an interview with news outlet Vice, Andrea Nutella said that he dreamt about this man for the first time in 2008. It was on this man's instructions that he made a website to identify him. However, no human looking like this man has ever been found. Nutella's website, thisman.org, presents the following theories to explain this occurrence. Carl Jung, a psychoanalyst and psychiatrist, provided the concept of an archetypal image of the unconscious mind that people see in difficult times of their lives. This man could be an example of an archetype. Another theory was that the man could be a godly manifestation. Perhaps some corporation was conditioning people mentally to dream about the same person. Some people only had dreams of this man after they had seen his picture online or heard about him from others. It's difficult for people to remember the faces of those they dream about, so people may have been inaccurately describing the man in their dreams as Nutella's this man. However, just as the story hit fever pitch, it was discovered that thisman.org was linked to a website called guerrillamarketing.it, a fake marketing agency known to pull large-scale hoaxes. And while this man was outed as a publicity stunt, it was never explicitly linked to a product or service which chalked it up as a sort of marketing experiment. In 2010, a production company purchased the rights to the This Man IP, and plans for a feature-length movie were announced. However, there's been no announcement since.
Derived from American folklore, the story of the Melon Heads is known all over Connecticut, Michigan, and Ohio. According to urban legend, melon heads are tiny humans with giant bulbous melon-like heads that roam around the states attacking people, especially around Halloween. In Michigan, the melon heads are said to live near Felt Mansion and have also been seen in the wilderness surrounding Ottawa County. Different sources attribute the origin of melon heads to various reasons and entities. One story narrates that melon heads were actually kids suffering from hydrocephalus a condition in which cerebrospinal fluids fill the brain, putting pressure on the skull. Initially, according to the legends, these children were kept in the Junction Insane Asylum, which is in close proximity to the Felt Mansion. During their stay at the asylum, the children were physically and emotionally abused, leading them to become feral. It's said that they fled to the forests around the asylum and are said to still reside there. However, the Allegan County Historical Society denies the presence of any asylum in that area ever, although the land was once a prison. Another story says that these children lived in the Felt Mansion and plotted to kill the doctor responsible for abusing them. Local teenagers still hang out near Felt Mansion and have reported seeing the melon heads, calling them wobbleheads. Visitors to the area have also reported seeing curtains move in empty old buildings and strange noises coming from the rooms, such as footsteps and heavy breathing. In Ohio, melon heads are said to live in Kirtland. The local law narrates that a mysterious doctor named Dr. Crow or Dr. Melonhead used to perform unusual experiments on children. As a result, the children developed malformed bodies and abnormally large heads. Upon suffering this abuse, the melon heads killed the doctor and burned the orphanage down. There's even a 2010 horror movie called The Legend of Melon Heads based in the Kirtland suburbs. Meanwhile, melon heads seem to be as far spread out as Connecticut sited in New Haven County, Fairfield County, Weston, Easton, Stratford, Monroe and Shelton. It's interesting that the myth is so pervasive and has spread around the United States linked by uncanny details. As with most urban legends, it's difficult to point to one exact incident as the nucleus of the tale. So is there a strand of truth that runs through these tales to spark the legend in the first place? Could the melon heads really be out there lurking in the woods? No top secret facility is as well known as Area 51. With the spot's infamous reputation, Redditors were quick to assume that extraterrestrials are behind the bizarre happenings in this footage, recorded near the facility and shared to the site by user Stews35. Area 51 was built in 1955 in the deserts of Nevada in the United States. According to the stories, the facility became the site of top secret research into extraterrestrial life after an alien spacecraft crash landed in Roswell, New Mexico, a few states away. No one knows exactly what goes on behind the closely guarded gates of Area 51, but there have been plenty of stories about UFOs, alien technology, and even extraterrestrial creatures held hostage for decades, undergoing gruesome experiments. The Redditor who posted this footage claims that it was recorded near the mysterious Area 51. The video was filmed in the dark of night. The only light comes from several mysterious orbs floating in the distant sky. Look at that. Oh. You see how many there are? Yeah. Later, the footage shows only one large orb hovering in the same spot. However, we can now see two smaller dots of light zipping around the sky. So what could these strange lights be? It isn't often that we see ordinary aircraft hovering in this manner, and even less common to see them looping around in the sky in frantic circles at night time. The fact that this footage was allegedly filmed near Area 51, a mecca for extraterrestrial enthusiasts worldwide, only serves to deepen the mystery behind this bizarre sighting. Climate change has a lot of people worrying about the weather. However, this footage shared to TikTok by Dapper Dan P is hard to explain no matter how you slice it. The footage was recorded on an overcast day. 
The person filming points the camera up towards the sky showing a slate of grey cloud. Take a look. This cloud appears to be forming a perfect square in the sky. Clouds come in many shapes and sizes, but it's highly unusual to see one with perfect lines and sharp corners. Many who have seen clouds like this are certain there can only be one explanation, government weather control. There have been stories circulating for decades suggesting that governments of various countries are using mysterious technology to control the weather, and by extension, the populations of their countries. So could this square cloud be a sign of government weather control? If so, what's the government attempting to accomplish? Without additional evidence, this strange phenomenon remains a mystery. The International Space Station is a great opportunity for countries around the world to work together to learn more about our universe. According to Redditors like Rochi, who uploaded this clip, the rest of us can also learn a lot by watching the station's live video feed. The ISS regularly broadcasts live video footage from the space station, where those of us on Earth can see all of the exciting things going on among the stars. In this footage, one eagle-eyed viewer noticed something odd happening not far from the space station. There appears to be a long, wide object floating through space. The object seems to split apart into two pieces. Before drifting back together. This isn't the first time that strange things have been spotted on the ISS live feed. Many who regularly observe the feed theorise that the footage is regularly monitored and cut off when evidence of strange things appears on video. Often the video in question goes missing from the video archive, seemingly confirming the theories of a mass cover-up. Some Redditors who watch this video aren't quite convinced that it depicts evidence of an alien craft. Instead, they suggest that a light flare reflection on the ISS's window could have caused the strange phenomenon we see in the footage. Others, however, are certain that something fishy is going on. What do you think? Let me know your theories down below. Have you ever been alone in the forest and felt like you're being watched? This video from TikToker CaliGrace918 may have an explanation for that eerie feeling. The footage was filmed in a forest in Oklahoma by a friend of the TikToker. It appears to be late fall or winter as the trees in the area seem to be bare of leaves. However, it's one tree in particular that's caught the attention of the hikers behind the camera. Take a look. Oh, Near the middle of the trunk, someone's carved an extremely detailed face peeking out from inside the tree. The bizarre thing is, this tree is deep in the woods with nothing else around to suggest that the tree's been carved. It would seem someone's done this purely to mess with passing hikers which is kind of awesome. Even though this is just a carving, there have been legends about spirits inhabiting trees in many cultures across the centuries. 
The Greeks had dyads, the spirits of beautiful young women who lived in oak trees. The Buddhists had the Narafon who grew from trees in the forest of Himafan and were eaten by the deities. The Thai have Nung Ta Kian who haunt Hopia Odorata trees and may haunt those who cut down their trees without permission. So hats off to the person who carved this face. May your work continue to creep out hikers for years to come. We're used to seeing UFO videos showing a single blurry light in the dark night sky. However, this video from Redditor Lil Red 0073 is something else entirely. The footage, which was submitted to our subreddit, was shot in the skies above Rayleigh, North Carolina, USA. At first, the video appears to show nothing out of the ordinary, just a bluish grey sky. However, if you look at the sky more closely, you may notice something odd. The sky appears to be glittering with dozens of small lights. The white coloured lights are scattered across the sky in what appears to be an even regular pattern. They're so small that their source is impossible to see. Some viewers believe that what they're seeing in this footage is most likely a fleet of far-off alien spacecraft flying in a regular formation above the Earth. However, others thought it may have been some kind of light anomaly reacting with the clouds. Others suggested lanterns or balloons floating through the air. So what do you think's been spotted in the skies above North Carolina? Let us know your theories down below. When Redditor Bobagal uploaded this strange piece of footage, it sparked a fascinating debate as to what's actually been captured on film. The footage was recorded on a doorbell camera. We see a young boy watch as two motorcycles turn on their headlamps and drive away. After the second bike speeds around the corner, a dark mysterious figure suddenly begins running towards the house from down the street. It rounds the corner quickly and heads off after the motorcycles in a blur. What makes the footage so strange is that the running figure seems to fade in and out as it runs after the motorcycles. Sometimes it seems relatively solid, but at other times it seems less opaque. The footage is particularly scary because, according to the Redditor, one of the riders wrecked their bike just after this footage was recorded. Eerier still, if you watch the start of the footage again, the figure seems to appear out of thin air. It pauses and stands still as if watching the motorbike riders before it starts sprinting down the street. So who or what was the dark figure and did it cause the accident? Some viewers think that it was some sort of malicious ghost or spirit who had targeted the person on the bike, but others are less certain. If it is just a person, why were they acting so strangely before suddenly chasing the bikes? Did they have some sort of malicious intention? Ghost or criminal? What do you think? Let me know your theories down below. YouTuber Mario Lara is no stranger to the paranormal. For the most of 2021, he's been posting his experiences with the supernatural to YouTube. His latest encounter seems to be one of the most frightening to date. Mario owns a party supply shop in Mexico. For months, it's been exhibiting some very unsettling and inexplicable events. Items often move without reason, strange whispers can be heard after hours, and ghostly figures have been spotted haunting the shop. 
Despite its cheery, bright appearance, the premises seems to have a sinister presence lurking within it. Mario has decided to set up some cameras and other equipment in order to get evidence of the shop's eerie haunting. In this clip, early in the evening, some strange activity begins to manifest. Watch what one of the cameras caught. Here we can already see things beginning to move as some items fall off the shelf, seemingly all on their own. Later in the evening, as one of the investigators decides to get some rest on a sofa, something eerie happens in the background. Then, around 30 seconds later, this happens. As you can see, the TV slides across the floor towards the sleeping man. Not long after, the man is awoken by a loud banging noise. He jumps up and grabs a flashlight. When he notes the position of the TV, he seems perplexed. Next, we see footage of the investigator killing some time while playing a PlayStation VR. As his attention is fixated on the screen, something truly chilling happens in the background. Watch. A small, transparent form appears near the back of the room. Only its dark, short hair is distinctly visible as it moves in rapid blurs along the wall, staring at the man. When the investigator later attempts to communicate with the entity, he hears strange sounds in response to his questions. Me dirijo al demonio. 
A camera shows a candle being blown out in an empty room. The investigation team believes that the ghost of a child is dwelling in the stall. They theorise that the child's spirit has an attachment to a particular item, a piñata of the Disney princess Moana. For now, the ghost seems relatively harmless, but no one knows how far it will go. This next piece of terrifying footage comes from TikToker Paulina Lara62, who was actually Mario Lara's niece from the previous segment. The footage shows Paulina alone in the back room of the shop where the investigation of the previous segment took place. Take a look at what happened. As you can see, Paulina appears to be dragged across the room by some unseen force. One of her legs is sticking up in the air as she slides. To make matters even stranger, take a look at the wall near the doorway where the worker is dragged. This is the Moana piñata that Mario believes is haunted. The doll's arms and legs are stretched out as if hung from a cross. The doll never moves from its spot on the wall, but that hasn't stopped viewers from speculating that the creepy doll might be to blame for the strange events in the footage. Paulina later posted a photo on her Facebook page that shows just how scary this incident was for her. Hours after her shift ended, her ankle is ringed with a dark black bruise. This is an ongoing saga that we'll definitely keep an eye on and we'll be sure to post updates as they come to hand. In the meantime, check out Mario Lara's channel for all his previous evidence caught on camera. As always, there's links in the description box below. Not many people can claim that they've had an actual alien encounter. Even fewer have abduction stories that experts believe to be credible. According to the Birmingham UFO Group, this footage is one of the rare cases where they believe the victim's claims. It all started when a woman from Droitwich, England confessed to her husband that she believed she'd been abducted by aliens while sleeping. At first, he didn't believe her. He decided to try and put her mind at ease by setting up an infrared camera in their bedroom one night to record them while they slept, hoping that seeing evidence of her peaceful night's rest would be enough to convince her that the extraterrestrials had been nothing but a bad dream. Unfortunately, the video shows something very different from what he expected. In the clip, we can see the couple sleeping peacefully under a white duvet. A few seconds into the footage, the duvet rises above the sleeping woman. When it falls back down, it falls all the way to the mattress. The woman appears to be gone. According to the timestamp, the footage is sped up. Approximately 12 and a half minutes later, the duvet billows up into the air, even higher this time. When it falls back down, it lands on a prone body. It appears the woman is again peacefully asleep in her bed. The next morning, she once again claims to have been abducted in the night. The footage seems to confirm it. UFO investigator Dave Hodrian contacted the woman in the footage to further look into the events that were caught on camera. Hodrian sent the video off to two separate video analysis experts who were at a loss to explain what the clip showed. 
The woman in the footage, who wishes to remain anonymous, claims to have been abducted by aliens on two separate occasions. The first incident occurred on the 3rd of December 2010. At around 1am, the woman got up to check on her daughters in bed. When she walked past a window, she noticed a strange disc-shaped object floating above the field adjacent to their home. The object began to glow and came closer to the house. At this point, the woman claims that she felt like the object was observing her and that a strange feeling of calm washed over her and strangely, she just went back to bed. Later in the night, the woman felt like she was no longer in her own bedroom. It felt like she was naked, lying on an unfamiliar hardened surface in a darkened room. Her eldest daughter was said to be kneeling beside her. She leaned in and whispered, Mum, it's alright, don't worry. It's your turn, Mum, don't be scared, they're not going to hurt you. Suddenly, she felt like she was floating down a tunnel of some kind. At this point, she was paralysed and could only move her eyes. She could sense that there were several small beings standing around her. It felt like these beings were able to talk directly in her mind. They reassured her that no harm would come to her. The woman recalls several invasive experiments happening to her before suddenly waking up back in her own bed. She was naked, with her nightgown strewn on the floor some distance away. Frightened, she woke her husband up to explain what had happened. The following morning, the woman felt sharp pains in her lower abdomen near her ovaries, as well as an aching finger on her left hand. In the subsequent days, the woman became anxious about sleeping. It got so bad that her husband decided to install the infrared camera in their bedroom, which brings us to the footage we just saw. On the night this footage was captured, the woman recalls a buzzing feeling happening in her head before being taken to a room filled with the small beings once again. One of the beings began moving its hands over and around the woman's body but not touching her directly, keeping about an inch or two away. Again, as if by telepathy, the being communicated, reporting a series of ailments that the woman suffered from, such as a stomach ulcer in her lower abdomen. Moments later, the woman felt a familiar rushing sensation, as though floating down a tunnel or corridor. Without quite realising it, it was the morning after. In the mirror, she noticed that she had two asymmetrical bruises around her lower belly. Certain that something strange had happened, the woman and her husband checked the security footage and were stunned at what they saw. The footage seemed to prove that she was abducted and removed from her bed for a period of time. This case is far grander in scope than what we've been able to cover here. To read Dave Hodrian's full report on the incident, I'll put a link to the Birmingham UFO Group's website in the description box below. Strange things can happen in the dark of night such as the bizarre events recorded and shared to TikTok by user Tracy Perez 408 The footage was recorded on an indoor security camera mounted near the ceiling of their bedroom. At the start of the video, we see a man asleep on the bed. Immediately, the footage becomes strange when something small and black seems to run across the floor and under the bed. Thirty seconds later, a sinister looking hand reaches into the room and slides down the door jamb. Not long after the hand appears, the door slowly creaks open. After a few more seconds, an unidentified object suddenly rolls into the doorway, crashing into the foot of the bed. Things take a terrifying turn when the man in the bed begins to move. Yeah, no, 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 no. 
En la casa del Carmen me asustaban más todavía. Ay, puta, ¿Sí vio? The man awakens in a panic and tosses a pillow at his sleeping roommate. Seconds later, something strange happens to the chair in the middle of the room. With so many strange little details happening in this clip, there's been a plethora of theories suggested in the comments section. Some believe that the whole thing's a prank, perhaps orchestrated by another roommate. However, the moving chair, the creepy hand and strange crawling black thing have left a lot of viewers on edge, suggesting that some kind of entity might be haunting this house. So where do you sit, prank or haunting? Let me know in the comment section down below. TikToker Fernando Victoroli has uploaded some footage that has left viewers thoroughly creeped out. The footage was recorded during a night shift at a train station. We see two railroad workers walking alongside the tracks as the TikToker walks behind them, recording the train as they walk past it. See if you can spot anything weird as they walk along. They don't seem to notice that they've caught something strange in their footage. Pay close attention to the train's windows. You may just see a creepy face staring back at you. The face at first is difficult to make out through the dark window. It's white with dark sunken eyes. It appears for only a moment before the night shift worker moves on down the tracks, blissfully unaware that they're being watched by something. Obviously, it's very late at night and the train is parked at the depot, so there's no reason for anyone to be on board. Could this be a simple case of pareidolia, the brain's tendency to see faces in inanimate objects? Or is there something more sinister at play here? Take a closer look at the footage and draw your own conclusions. When you're having a bad day, you might feel like a dark cloud is hanging over you. However, unlike the man in this footage from Techworld TV, you probably don't have any proof on film. The footage shows an older man walking across a busy street. Watch what happens. There appears to be a strange black mass hovering just behind him as he walks, almost as if a shadow figure is perched on his back. The man seems to take no notice of this bizarre shadow that seems to be tightly attached to him. Some viewers have suggested that the dark shadow could actually be some sort of protective spirit, as the man walks across the busy road easily without being injured by oncoming traffic. So is this just an ordinary shadow, a shadow person, or some sort of guardian angel? Let us know what you think in the comments section down below. You might want to check the weather forecast before heading to a little town in the Pacific Northwest called Oakville, Washington. A blip on the West Coast with a population of just 723, Oakville is famous for being home to a weather anomaly that has kept people wondering what exactly they saw falling from the sky on August 7th of 1994. Residents of the town claim that torrents of blob-like rain began falling from the sky at around 3 a.m on this bizarre evening in 1994. It was enough the witnesses who were on the road in those wee hours of the morning recall needing to turn on their windshield wipers to keep up with the downpour. Unlike normal rain, the blob rain was a squishy substance that felt like jello in your hands. We all know the warning not to get caught in a rainstorm because you might catch a cold. This advice apparently also translates for blob rain. Curiously, people who got caught in the blob storm began reporting physical symptoms of illness almost immediately. Most reported dizziness, nausea, general malaise, and flu-like symptoms. 
A few people who touched the blob brain had to get hospitalized with intense symptoms. There's even a credible report of a kitten dying after coming into contact with the mysterious substance. The blob rain on August 7 wasn't an isolated occurrence. If you ask the locals, the rain fell multiple times over a period spanning about a month. The death toll of dogs and cats in the area reportedly rose with each rainfall. So what was the goo that rained down over a sleepy Washington town all those years ago? The situation was so serious that the Washington Department of Ecology actually tested goo specimens that locals had gathered. While the department's official analysis concluded that the substance didn't contain any human or animal parts, independent lab testing of a sample stored in a local woman's freezer did contain a nucleus that pointed to human or animal origin. The independent sample was sent to the Washington State Health Laboratory, where it was tested by epidemiologist Mike McDowell. Over time, McDowell studied the mysterious substance and came to the conclusion that it was man-made. He reported his findings to his supervisor. The following day, the sample went missing. McDowell subsequently reported the missing sample to higher-up management, where he was allegedly told to not ask questions and to move on. Several blob origin theories have been floated around over the years. The most popular one is that the goo was actually jellyfish debris caused by military bomb testing in the ocean. Another theory is that the blobs were actually waste from commercial airline toilets. However, the Federal Aviation Administration has stepped in to debunk this idea. The truth behind this weather phenomenon seems destined to remain underground. Nobody has ever come forward with an explanation in the more than 25 years since the Oakville blob incident occurred. Believers and skeptics can't stop picking at a case dating back to the 1950s in London. Known as the Battersea Poltergeist event, this haunting became a sensation back in its day. Due to gripping details involving spontaneous fires, strange messages appearing on the walls, and handwritten ghost letters addressed to a teenage girl. While the haunting took place in the London area, home of Wally and Kitty Hitchings, it was their teenage daughter named Shirley who seemed to be the focus of the alleged ghost's attention. The haunting began with a bang one night in 1956 at 63 Wycliffe Road in Battersea. The Hitchings family heard a loud bang reverberate through their home. They would later describe the sounds as seeming as like they're coming from the roots of the house. Next, objects like clocks and cookware began flying through the home without explanation. It wasn't long before the bold entity was trashing entire rooms in the Hitchings residence. The clattering became so boisterous that the family's neighbours began complaining about the noise. While all of this seems pretty standard as far as hauntings go, the ghost was about to write a new chapter that would put this haunting in the history books. The alleged ghost that was pestering the Hitchings family soon began penning letters to Shirley under the name of Donald. The family also noticed that the entity seemed to be following Shirley around the house based on the noise patterns that they could observe. The Battersea Poltergeist event quickly became fodder for British television shows and magazines. Many claim that it was all an elaborate hoax. The most common theory was that Shirley had conjured up all of the details in a bid for attention. Even family members speculated that Shirley might be carrying out the ghostly deeds on her own, while under the influence of possession. While experts ranging from exorcists to mediums were trotted out to try and get to the bottom of the letter-writing ghost amid the media fanfare, no breakthroughs were ever made. Ghost hunters interested in tracking down Donald today are out of luck because the Hitchings' home was demolished in the 1960s. Shirley is still sticking to her story all these years later. Now 80 years old, the great-grandmother who resides in Waterlooville recently told newscasters that she still dislikes speaking about Donald because she fears it'll make him return. Did the sea eat three lighthouse keepers keeping watch in Scotland's Outer Hebrides in the early 1900s? 
perched in a moody setting near the highest point on Aelin Moor, the Flannan Isles lighthouse is so fascinating that it's been the subject of a Doctor Who episode, the inspiration for a Genesis song called The Mystery of Flannan Isles Lighthouse, and the topic of several books. So what exactly happened at this 75-foot lighthouse to create so much fascination? It became apparent that something dreadful had happened at the Flannan Isles Lighthouse, when a steamer passing by on its way in from Philadelphia noted that the lighthouse's light was not operating on December 15 of 1900. When a relief vessel arrived on the island to check out the situation 11 days later on December 26, it was discovered that the lighthouse's three keepers had vanished. The keepers, James Ducant, Thomas Marshall and Donald MacArthur were nowhere to be found, leaving behind a series of mysterious clues. Replacement keeper Joseph Moore was first on scene. Inside, he discovered abandoned plates of food, meat, potatoes and pickles. A chair was overturned. The clock on the wall had stopped ticking as if frozen in time. Two of the three keepers' coats were gone from the rack, but one remained behind. A logbook was discovered that contained even more strange details. An entry from Thomas Marshall on the 12th of December 1900 read, Severe winds, the likes of which I've never seen before in 20 years. There was also notes saying that James Ducat had been keeping to himself and Donald MacArthur had been seen crying. A scribbled message mentioned that all three men had been praying. Bizarrely, local weather reports at the time indicate that there were no recorded storms in the area for the 12th, 13th and 14th of December. The weather was calm up until the 17th. However, an entry in the logbook on the 15th read, Storm ended, see calm, God is over all. These logbook entries certainly do deepen the mystery, but there is some speculation that the entries have been fabricated. Some historians claim that the real logbooks were lost in the 1901 inquest into the incident. So what really happened? The investigation at the time concluded that the men had gone down to the rocks surrounding the lighthouse, sometime after dinner on the evening of the 15th. It was then that a large wave came without warning to sweep them into the sea. With no bodies to claim, people familiar with the incident began to come up with speculation about what really happened to the men. Some claimed that they had arranged for a boat to take them away to a new life. Others insisted the men had been spies. There was even a tale about a ghost ship coming ashore to carry the men away. Another popular theory claims that one of the keepers went mad before murdering his companions on that desolate stretch of grey skied rock. The one thing that both skeptics and paranormal pushers can agree on is that the Flannan Isles Lighthouse truly is a ghost lighthouse today. This historic light became automated back in 1971. While it continues to guide the way for seafarers today, you can be certain that every sailor with the knowledge of the area's local history thinks twice before trusting this potentially misguided guiding light. In 1971, in a small town in the Yane region of Spain, a family reported that something very strange was happening in their home. On August 23rd of that year, Maria Pereira discovered a strange marking on her kitchen floor that seemed to resemble a human face. Maria was so disturbed by the image that she had her husband and son destroy the kitchen floor with a pickaxe before laying down fresh concrete. Before long, the family claimed that a new face appeared in the concrete of the kitchen floor. Soon, word of the strange phenomenon spread around town and people began visiting the home to get a glimpse of the face. The incident became so famous that the mayor of the town forbid the destruction of the image and ordered that the concrete be systematically and safely removed so the phenomenon could be properly studied. Soon after, more faces of different shapes, sizes and genders appeared. Local townsfolk began speculating as to what was actually happening in the Pereira family home. Many believed that the faces were a thoughtographic phenomenon, whereby the deceased former owner of the home, Maria Gomez Camara, was making faces appear in the concrete to make contact from beyond the grave. However, the discovery of zinc, lead and chromium on the kitchen floor has led to the hypothesis that the faces were painted on the floor as a hoax. 
So was Maria Pereira making faces for attention and money? Nobody really knows to this day. Plenty of scientists and engineers have been brought in to study the concrete floors in the Pereira family home over the years. A skeptic from the Spanish Society of Parapsychology named Ramos Pereira concluded that pigment and paintbrush bristles could be easily observed after conducting infrared photography in the home. However, other experts have concluded that the images were not made with paint after conducting testing. While the best guesses state that the family members used some combination of oxidizing agents, resin, nitric acid, sulfuric acid and acetic acid to create the inexplicable images, nobody's been able to prove concretely that the images were made using external manipulation or elements. Skeptics who have attempted to recreate the faces using concrete solvents, hydrochloric acid and silver nitrate have been unsuccessful. The mystery of the Belmez faces has been the source of several books and television specials in Spanish media over the years. Many skeptics today believe that the images were made using some combination of paint and acid in an attempt to drum up a money-making scheme. However, the fact that nobody's ever been able to pin down exactly how the images were created allows this story to perpetuate over and over, minting itself as a puzzling unsolved mystery that will continue to perplex audiences for years to come. American Fork Canyon is famous for its rock climbing, hiking and choice fishing spots. But those who have visited will tell you there's something more mysterious going on in this scenic mountain range. Nestled in Utah's Wasatch Mountains, this spot is supposedly haunted by the spirit of two lovers who are forever entombed in Timonogos Cave. The tale behind the haunting of American Fork Canyon purports that a Native American warrior tricked a princess who was the object of his affection into marrying him by posing as a god who would save her people from a drought if she agreed to be his wife. Upon discovering the lie, the betrayed princess took her own life by leaping from a cliff. The warrior placed her body inside Timonogos Cave after discovering what she had done. Those who believe the story point to the heart-shaped mineral formation that droops from the cave. American Fork Canyon is a hotspot for alleged haunted happenings. Many hikers have claimed to see a little boy wandering alone on the trails. When they approach him to see if he's okay, he runs off never to be seen again. Others report the appearance of a man who thrashes about on the trail before disappearing. People who hang around the canyon at night time report seeing eerie hitchhikers along the winding foggy roads who have an uncanny habit of disappearing into the mist of headlights just as the cars slow down to offer a ride. These tales would be easy to dismiss if American Fork Canyon didn't have such a habit of attracting death and darkness. Several people have died in rock climbing accidents at the canyon over the years. The ghost culture at American Fork Canyon has taken on a life of its own in recent years. If you decide to camp here, park employees will tell you endless tales of hearing footsteps, feeling someone brush up against their skin, or overhearing whispers while doing surveillance around the park. Both employees and visitors routinely find themselves stepping into cold spots on the trails. These unexplained chilly zones can even be felt on 90 degree days when the sun is beating down over the canyon. If you want to suss this eerie paranormal destination out yourself, American Fork Canyon can be accessed via the Alpine Loop Scenic Byway on State Route 92. The scariest thing about window shopping is often the hairy price tags. However, according to this video from YouTube channel The Hidden Underbelly 2.0, shoppers who look at one window display in Chihuahua, Mexico might find themselves worried about a little more than just maxing out their credit cards. In this video, we see two young women on a sunny street in Mexico. As they look into a shop front window, something eerie happens. Watch. If you look closely at the mannequin's eyes, you can see them shift slightly. These women are not the first to be terrified by this mannequin. She's known as La Pascualita, and she's been gracing the shop's window since March of 1930. Locals were instantly abuzz with gossip about this mannequin, shocked at how lifelike it appears. 
Her hands, in particular, struck locals as uncanny, as traces of veins could be seen through the dewy skin. The gossip reached a fever pitch when people began talking about how much the mannequin resembled the shop owner's daughter. The daughter, who had only recently passed away, from the bite of a black widow spider not long before she was supposed to be married. Rumours began to circulate speculating that La Pasqualita wasn't a mannequin at all, but rather the pristinely embalmed body of the shop owner's daughter. It wasn't long before passers-by began reporting that they had seen the mannequin moving, particularly its eyes. Because of the rumours about the mannequin's grisly origins, many now believe that the spirit of the shop owner's daughter is still attached to the shop, watching people pass by through the mannequin's eyes. Though is this uncanny mannequin really the well-preserved body of a bride who died too young? Or is it simply a loving tribute from a grieving father? Watch the clip again and come to your own conclusions. Antiquing is a popular pastime, and often trips to antique stores can lead to some truly amazing finds. When YouTuber Muna Bruzon saw something at an antique fair that they just had to have, they had no idea what they were getting themselves into. In 2017, this YouTuber visited an antique fair and instantly spotted an old doll. The doll's eyes seemed to follow them everywhere they went. Intrigued, they purchased the doll and took it home, hoping to prove that it was more than just their imagination. They immediately began recording footage in hopes of capturing proof of the doll's supernatural nature. The toy didn't disappoint. If we watch that again, we can see the doll's head turn to look at them for several seconds before turning away. The owner's hands are nowhere near the doll's head when it turns. They set the doll down and continue to examine it, this time moving its head manually to see if there's any logical explanation for how the head was able to turn on its own. As the owner manipulates the head, the doll's eerily lifelike eyes appear to move to stay focused on the person holding it. Some dolls are made with weighted eyelids that can open and close on their own, but there's no easy explanation for how its eyes could move completely on their own. The person who purchased this doll felt like it was calling out to them in the store by following them with its eyes. The video footage seems to confirm this suspicion. So is this doll really haunted? Is it somehow possessed, perhaps by the spirit of a former owner? Or is there another way to explain the footage? Let me know your theories in the comment section down below. This video from the YouTube channel Obscura shows yet another mannequin doing something that should be physically impossible. This video was recorded on a cell phone camera by someone waiting outside a strip mall on a grey rainy day. It's unclear what made them pull out their camera in the first place, but they seem to be clearly focused on a nearby storefront featuring two mannequins. Watch what they caught. As you can see, the seated mannequin's head turns to face the camera. 
Even without a face, it seems to be staring straight at the person in the car. Viewers of this video have come up with several theories about what's going on. Some viewers suspect a simple trick of the eye, theorising that a raindrop sliding down the car's window could have created a strange shadow or a refraction that made it seem as if the mannequin's head had moved. Others think that the video was simply a setup, suggesting that a person in a white bodysuit was posing as a mannequin inside of the shop. Still, others are certain that the mannequin is somehow haunted or possessed. No matter what's going on here, the video is undoubtedly creepy. Anyone would be unnerved by a blank, featureless face turning to stare at them directly through the hazy rain. So is this mannequin haunted, or is it just a trick of the light? Tell us what you think down below. YouTuber Smith doesn't really believe in ghosts. So when the doll that they kept on their old chase began acting strangely, they were at a loss for an explanation. The YouTuber and their wife were out browsing a flea market when they came across this old composition doll. Prior to the 1940s, these dolls were made of a composite of sawdust, glue and other materials such as cornstarch, resin or wood flour to increase their durability. You're much more likely to find one of these dolls sitting around an old flea market than you are to spot a more fragile porcelain doll. This particular doll isn't in great shape with some of the material peeling off its legs. This isn't uncommon for a composite doll, though they were marketed as unbreakable. The composite material began to deteriorate over time. Despite its less than pristine condition, the couple happily took their new friend home and made it comfortable on their old chase. That's when things started to get freaky. Take a look. Much to their surprise, the doll began moving on its own, slowly raising its right arm into the air above its head. These old dolls had no mechanical parts, so there's no simple explanation for how it could be moving. With absolutely no information about this specific doll, they had no idea what to think. The doll's new owner turned to the internet for answers. Some skeptics think that the video could be a hoax. Because of the way the camera and the doll are placed, it wouldn't be too hard for an accomplice to stand off screen, moving the doll's arm with an invisible piece of wire or string. However, others are certain that this creepy old doll is haunted. This is an older clip and no new information has surfaced since filming, so for now this mystery remains unsolved. Ventriloquist Andy Gross is certainly used to being surrounded by dummies that others might find a little creepy. In this video that he shared to his YouTube channel, Andy Gross Live, he has his first taste of being freaked out by his own dummies. In the video's introduction, Andy states that he's noticed the dummies in a certain case in his home changing position while he's away. Lately when I've been coming back from some of my shows, these guys have changed positions. Now, I don't mean just a little bit, I mean like this guy here with the black hat, his head was actually turned all the way around last week when I came home. The guy on the end in the white right there, he was laying down inside the case. He suspects that his wife or one of his children might be trying to mess with him. So he decides to set up a hidden camera during his next trip away to hopefully catch the culprit in the act. What he sees on the footage though is not at all what he expected. Upon returning home, he notices that one of the dummy's heads seems to have moved. He reviews the footage, expecting to see a member of the household sneaking into the room and moving the doll. Unfortunately, he sees something much creepier. It just gets me every time. I mean, it's so weird and creepy. As you can see, the dummy's head moves completely on its own. Right? 
The way it moves couldn't have been due to gravity alone, and Andy states that he's checked the doll's mechanism closely, but nothing about it seems unusual. Ooh, this is kind of strange. Here we go. Hi. Um, just a normal puppet. So what could have caused this dummy to move on its own? Ventriloquists typically give their dummies personalities during their acts, but seeing one move without its owner nearby is certainly unnerving. Of course, many viewers have suspected that it's all just a prank. After all, ventriloquists put on shows to entertain. However, Andy has maintained that this isn't a setup and that he was quite freaked out by the footage. Andy ends the video stating that he plans to capture more secret footage, and if it happens again, he's going to move house. Probably a good idea. In June 2021, paranormal investigators Lalo Escalante decided to search a local cemetery in Culiacan, Mexico. They had heard rumors of strange things happening on the property. Locals often report hearing screams and spot unusual shadowy figures walking through the property late at night. The most unsettling story revolves around a supposed haunted doll that sits in one of the graves. It's said to come alive and move among the tombstones. Under the glow of a full moon, the investigators explore the graveyard. For the first 10 minutes or so, the YouTubers appear on edge. They claim to hear strange noises coming from all directions of the cemetery. After exploring for some time, they come across a mausoleum and look inside to find a tall doll with lengthy blonde hair standing next to a large cross and flowers. What happens next is sure to give you the chills. Watch. As you can see, the doll appears to move inside the sealed mausoleum. There's no doubt about it, viewers have been terrified by this clip. There seems to be no way that the doll could move without the explanation of something otherworldly. To make this incident even scarier, a month prior, a separate group of urban explorers known as Urbex MX captured the exact same doll moving on its own. Take a look. This incident was captured during a live stream. Hundreds of viewers watched in real time as the doll moved inside the mausoleum. So is this graveyard home to restless spirits? And is this doll really possessed by some unknown entity? According to these two separate accounts, it would appear so. Now, if you want to see some more freaky clips, then check out that link on the top there. Otherwise, we have these giant paranormal playlists right there for you to binge on. Now, if you want to get your name scrolling along the top there, consider supporting our Patreon campaign. There's a link in the description box below. And that's it for me. I'll see you all next time. Peace!